Now this week we are continuing our discussion of the 84 Mahasiddhas, or at least a selected number of those Mahasiddhas. And this week we're talking about Saraha. Saraha is one of the better known of the 84 uh, Mahasiddhas. And he's also known as the Great Brahman. Uh, he lived around the 8th century and was considered to be one of the founders of Vajrayana or Tantric Buddhism. Uh, he also is known for his dohas or his uh, rhyming couplets, the, the musical format that he used in doing his teachings. And so in the story we will see an example of that. So the Brahmin Saraha, so he was in the Brahmin caste, which is the highest caste in the, the Indian society at that time, was the son of a Dakini, and he was born in the east of India. So the east of India, of course, we know is the home of most of the Mahasiddhas. And he himself was a Dhaka, a spiritual being, and is said to have had many magical powers. He received instruction in tantric mysteries from many Buddhist masters by night. So it's said that in the daytime he practiced more regular, acceptable forms of Buddhist practice, and at night he learned and practiced the tantra. However, Saraha enjoyed spiritus liquors, which were forbidden by Brahmin law. And he was discovered drinking, and his fellow Brahmins were outraged by his behavior. And so a delegation was sent to the king to demand that Saraha be deprived of his caste status. Now, the king decided that he would investigate, or the, the, take their word for it, and so he had a private visit with Saraha. And as a part of that, Saraha said, I do not drink. If you doubt me, gather together the Brahmins and all the people, and I will prove it. So they gathered together a big crowd of people, and Saraha announced a series of trials to prove his innocence. So he began with, if I am guilty, may my hand burn to the bone, and plunged his hand into a vat of boiling oil. To all's amazement, when he withdrew his hand several minutes later, it was entirely unharmed. And this convinces me of his innocence, said the king, turning to the Brahmins. Are you satisfied? The charlatan drinks, they replied. Whereupon Saraha called for a bowl of molten copper. If I am guilty, he said, let my mouth and throat be horribly burned. And he drank the liquid with one gulp, then opened his mouth wide, and everyone could see healthy pink skin. Enough of these magic tricks, shouted the Brahmins. We know he drinks. Saraha then led the crowd to a huge tank of water. Let him who is assured of his purity jump into this tank with me. The one who sinks is the liar. A Brahmin zealot who offered himself for the test, and they both leaped into the tank, and the Brahmin promptly sank to the bottom. Who dares me accuse me of drinking now, shouted Saraha. If the slightest doubt still exists, weigh the two of us. Whoever is the, hot, whoever is the lighter is guilty. The crowd gasped, for the Brahmin was twice as large as Saraha. But, when the two of them were weighed, the scale showed that Saraha was much heavier. At this point, the king stepped in, pointing to Saraha, he declared, If this venerable being drinks, then may he continue to do so for all time. Saraha began to sing three song cycles to the king, the queen, and the people. After receiving Saraha's instruction, the Brahmins gave up traditional practices and entered into the path of the Buddha. In time, the king, queen, and the entire court attained Buddhahood. The songs that Saraha had sung became known far and wide as the three cycles of Dohas. As for Saraha, he took a 15-year-old girl as his consort and moved to a distant land. Saraha continued to practice his sadhana in isolation. It is also said in other stories that he took up the practice of making arrows as a way of making a living. And so the pictures of him are depicted of him with and holding an arrow. One day, another story, 
He told her, his consort, to cook him a radish curry for supper. And while she was doing that, he began to meditate and continued to meditate all night long and the next day and the day after that and continued for 12 long years. Finally, he awakened to the outside world and bellowed, where is my radish curry? You sit in Samadhi for 12 years and the first thing you ask for is radish curry? His Dakini asked. Saraha decided he must move to a mountain hermitage to continue his meditation properly. If you can awaken from Samadhi with a desire for radish curry, what do you think the isolation of a mountain will do for you? His, choir, his consort inquired. The purest solitude, she counseled, is one that allows you to escape from the preoccupations and prejudices, from the labels and concepts of a narrow, inflexible mind. Very wise guidance from his consort here. So Raha listened carefully to the wisdom of his Dakini guru and began to devote himself exclusively to ridding his mind of conceptual thought and belief in the substantiality of objective reality. In time, he began to experience all things in their primal purity, even attaining supreme realization of Mahamudra. In fact, he's credited with being one of the original sources of texts on Mahamudra. The remainder of his life was spent in boundless service to others. Upon his death, Saraha and his consort ascended to the bliss of the paradise of the Nikinis. And so eventually his teachings were passed on down through uh, guru to disciple and reached uh, Tilopa, Naropa, and the rest of the Kagyu lineage. So he's got a very close tie with the, the Kagyu lineage in the Tibetan Buddhist tradition. So one other story on our great Mahasiddhas. So we look forward to the next story.